What is happening guys? It's Spruce Goose here and today I want to show you what is without a doubt the most frustrating offense I have played against in Madden 21. This guy ran Wildcat every single play of the game and it was actually working for him. So in this video I want to go back and watch that gameplay together and kind of talk you through the adjustments I made over the course of the game to try and slow down this absolute nightmare of a scheme. Now hopefully you'll never need this video because you'll never actually come across someone running one of these wildcat schemes but I have a feeling that as the quarterbacks are getting faster and as running backs like Jim Thorpe are coming out who actually have okay throwing stats we're gonna see more and more people running the wildcat and if you run into one of those guys you gotta know how to stop it. Now before we get into the gameplay just a quick reminder that I do stream several nights a week over at twitch.tv slash spruce goose tv the new official stream schedule is monday wednesday friday at eight o'clock p.m eastern time so definitely come stop by and say hi sometime we talk about all kinds of crazy stuff over there both football and non-football related so come stop by sometime i'd love to see you in there and besides that if you guys end up enjoying the video please hit that like and subscribe button because it helps me a ton but with that let's go check out this nightmare wildcat scheme Oh yeah guys, I forgot to mention we have the new logo, we got the new webcam border. This is actually the webcam border that I'm using over on Twitch. So if you think the animation's a little too distracted, let me know in the comments. I'll go back to just the, the white rectangle that I was doing before. But I kind of like it, so we're going to try it out for this video. Definitely let me know what you think. But alright guys, right here, this is the Wildcat scheme that this guy was running. This is in the Run and Gun playbook, and he was running 5 out of these 6 plays. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So he was not running PA Jet Cross, but he was running everything else. I would say you're going to mostly see in this video, you're going to see Power, Jet Sweep, and Counter with the occasional PA Jet Sweep. He loves throwing to this tight end corner route right here. And so you guys are just going to see the same plays over and over and over again. And what's crazy, and what makes it so tough to defend, is that on all four of these plays, it involves the slot receiver who's actually another running back. Uh, coming in motion every single time so there's absolutely no tell until the ball is snapped what the play is going to be you, you have this receiver in motion every single time sorry running back in motion every single time and you have to wait until the ball is snapped to try and read what's actually going to happen and that's the beauty of a of a good scheme right is it looks the same every time but then lots of different things can happen so this guy has had mastered, I guess, running the mostly these four plays, occasionally this play as well. And it's damn near impossible to stop. I'm sure I'm not the only one who struggled online to stop this guy. Just because, as you'll see, not only is it a good scheme, but he's got some freak athletes playing these running back positions as well. And so... That's the scheme. I just want to let you guys know. It's in the run and gun playbook. I don't think you can run this in any other playbook. I mean, so like this play power, it's in, I guess it's only in run and gun. At least according to Huddle GG. Uh, I, there are other playbooks that have Wildcat. Like I believe the Dolphins playbook also has Wildcat. But if you wanted to run this full package of Wildcat plays, you can only do this in run and gun. So I just want to show you guys what he's running before we actually see it in the game. But with that, Let's jump into the gameplay. All right, guys, so I'm actually missing the first minute, 10 seconds of this game, but I promise you're not missing a whole lot. All it was was this guy running the Wildcat all the way down the field on me. He's got Derrick Henry in the backfield. He's got Jim Thorpe coming in motion, and I just cannot slow it down. We consistently got him to, like, third down. Uh, later in the game, we'll get him to fourth down as well, but this offense is just built to get a guaranteed like three or four yards every single time so he walks into the end zone he goes for two right here and we do stop him so he's only got six points on his first drive but i already know this is gonna be a game where i'm gonna have to win with my offense more than my defense and it's just gonna be kind of experimentation on the defensive side of the ball we try to figure out a good scheme now on offense we are running gun trips tight end offset i am going to be putting out a free ebook on the youtube channel very soon on this offense so definitely if if you enjoy uh what you see on the offensive side of the ball definitely consider checking out the free ebook now right here we're gonna hit him with a mike blitz three beater it's one that i just found this week it's working so well so far it's out of trips tight end offset it will be in the free ebook and he was just running mike blitz three every single play so i was like we gotta just hit him with the mike blitz three beater and fortunately, it worked out for us. So we are up 7-6, but we are back now to trying to stop this Wildcat and Derrick Henry. And Derrick Henry is just loaded up with abilities, man. He is just loaded up with all kinds of abilities. And, you know, he's been he's trucking almost every single play. 
and breaking tackles. And it's just so, so, so tough to stop. Now, if you see, I came out in nickel 335 wide on my first two drives. And I was spying both safeties because, as you guys might know, you probably know, uh, spies play the quarterback, or sorry, play the run really well. And so that's why I have both safeties and spies because they're going to do a lot better job playing the run than in regular coverage. Now, right there, you saw he actually has the potential to pass the ball. And I had Sam Mills, a short linebacker, in man coverage on Darren Waller, who I believe had deep out elite on him. And so I, I immediately took Sam Mills out and put Derwin James in that linebacker spot. So it was Derwin James on one side on linebacker and uh, Isaiah Simmons on the other side. And so that way, I'll always have a tall safety manned up against Darren Waller so that he can't easily throw those corner routes to the tight end. I was also pressing and shading over the top every time, basically saying, you know, I'm going to try and, you know, commit everyone else to stopping the run, but still have my DBs and those two linebackers in pass coverage. But as you guys see, he is still rocking and rolling. We cannot slow him down. I think I also switched to nickel normal instead of nickel 335, uh, 335 wide that is. And nickel normal is doing a little bit better job. As you can see, we're still not really stopping him. So I'm going to have to figure out the right person to user if I really want to slow down his offense. But right now we make a great dot to Darren Waller. You know, if you guys watch, I only run a few plays out of trip side and I'll set. But if you call them at the right time, based on your pre-snap reads, it can be extremely effective. The 0-1 trap uh, alert bubble screen is one of my favorite plays in the playbook. Uh, now, right here, I actually saw that the crosser from Randy Moss, the X receiver, actually got over top his, uh, his zone on the left side. So I just waited for him to come open. A little bit of a swerve catch right there. And it's actually only 24 seconds left already in the first half. I'm not very happy with my play calling I had on these next couple plays. I really, well, that one was a, a good throw. Rich Gann just kind of sold me right there. This was the one in particular. Throwing this bubble screen on third and goal, it really wasn't open. Should have been thrown to the end zone, but that's on me. But we'll happily take our three. He only has, uh, what, 12 seconds now, uh, you know, before the half. I was like, okay, we just got to tackle him. Easy peasy. Well, guess what? Derrick Henry is just running over people, breaking tackles, and Derrick Henry gets all the way to the 36-yard line with three seconds left, and this guy gets his three points before halftime, and I am just so frustrated, man. And I'm so frustrated that I'm not even paying attention to him coming out an onside kick. I'm so lucky to recover this onside kick, but I was just so flustered, man, and you got to keep your composure, especially if you're playing against, you know, an offense that's really frustrating like this one is. You got to stay level-headed, keep your composure, make smart decisions. Now, right here, I'm throwing some DOS Darren Waller. Cutting it a little bit close, but we're, we're making it happen. I tried the speed option. Did not work at all. He sniffed it out from the very beginning, but that's okay. Right here, I'm going to throw a very quick pass to Randy Moss, who's going to get down to the one-yard line. And so the next two plays, I'm going to just try and pound it in with Marcel Reese. We don't get in. I switched to Barry Sanders. And I really should have taken my throw right here, guys. You got to take your points. Got to always take your points. I went on aggressive carry. We still couldn't get in. And remember that, guys. I went on aggressive carry. And when you go on aggressive carry, you got to make sure you change back the next drive. Remember that. But now he is back at the two-yard line. But we cannot get a stop, man. He's just getting a couple yards every play. Derrick Henry has reached for it on him and getting these amazing animations after contact. Now, we do get a good stop right there, and he's going to go for it on fourth and one anyway from the 11-yard line. And the jet sweep to Jim Thorpe, man. It's just a couple yards, but that's all you need. He's just back at it. Couple yards, couple yards, couple yards. And it's so funny. I went to Georgia Tech, and during my time at Georgia Tech, we were actually running a flex bone offense, or you might know it as a triple option offense. And it was based on this same principle of just pounding the rock, and just getting like four yards of carry, just wearing down the defense, and then very occasionally throwing in a pass play and going over the top, and you can get huge scores on it. Right there, we actually got an amazing stop on fourth down. He actually got a reach for it animation, uh, but somehow we got him just short anyway, and that keeps us in the game. Uh, it's already the fourth quarter with under three minutes left. He's chewing so much clock, and we find ourselves in a third and 14. But I noticed he was running mid blitz, in base alignment so we throw a corner route to uh, jerry rice with route tech get the touchdown and now we're able to tie it up but i tell you guys it's his offense it's such a hell scheme 
but at the same time i gotta kind of respect it in the sense that it's unique it's extremely off meta and again as a georgia tech fan uh, I have a little place in my heart for things like that. But right now, Derrick Henry is trucking Charles Woodson, going all the way for a touchdown on the very first play of his next drive. And honestly, I stopped pursuing partway through because I realized that if I tackled him, he was just going to chew out the rest of the game and kick a field goal to win. It was I figured it's just easier. Let him score. Then I have two and a half minutes and three timeouts to take my time working down the field and get a touchdown and tie this thing up. So I'm back to run an 0-1 trap. I'm back to run an X under if I need it. But the 0-1 trap with the uh, bubble screen is working really well so far. So we're just going to keep doing that uh, almost every single play. You know, so we're going to be in a what, third and two right here. I believe we're going to uh, uh, just 0-1 trap again. Yo, he was not bringing a lot of people in the box. If there's not a lot of people in the box, I like my chances on the 0-1 trap. Now right there. A little bit of a risky throw because his user was on that side, but we get it to Darren Waller. We're down to the eight yard line with just a little over a minute left. Now right here, the riskiest throw of the day. He almost came over and intercepted the pass on the bubble screen. And I was like, man, I got to be really careful. Now right here, very late throw to Darren Waller, but we got it in there. We snuck it in there and we tie the game up with just 34 seconds left. But as you guys already know, you saw at the end of the first half, 34 seconds is more than enough time for this guy to go get in field goal range. Yo, he he can do it on one play if we don't make these tackles. So he, he's trucking over my guys. I think that was Dion. He just trucked right there. He's going to the counter now. He was he was going uh, with the sweep and the power before, but he's going with the counter now. Now, guys, the one adjustment I made, I haven't talked a lot about my adjustments recently. Oh, gosh, another truck right there. I decided to start using his fullback. If you guys see, I'm going to call it the fullback. It's it's kind of like his guy lined up just behind his uh, tight end on the left side, or maybe it's his left tackle on the left side. But there's a guy lined up just behind the line on the left side. And I started using uh, the player manned up on that guy and putting him in a blitz. And that guy, oh, he ran out of time, by the way. Sorry, I'm, I'm barely keeping up. He ran out of time because we tackled him balance. He couldn't get field goal range. It went to overtime. But guys, watch me on defense this drive. I user that player manned up on the fullback and the fullback is the key the fullback will tell you where the play is going so if the, it's a counter the fullback will be running behind the line at the start if it's power the fullback is going to you'll lead block in the direction of the power or the jet sweep so that was the tell the fullback will tell you where the play is going so as long as you follow the fullback and kind of loop around to the outside and then click off your player will get outside contain right there now right here we got into a fourth and two Again, he runs the counter. He's trucking over my guys. He's about 10 yards away from field goal range. But also remember, if he scores a touchdown, then it's just game over. And Derrick Henry is in the zone. And we need a big stop now, man. We need a huge stop. And we're getting stops now. So we get him in a third and eight situation. But you know what he's going to He's going to keep running it. And he actually gets down to a fourth and five. He's going to run the power again. And this time, guys we get the huge stop we finally adjusted now we just need what maybe 15 yards to get into field goal range and this game's over and i'm like we are so close man we are so close to getting this win i throw the screen out to randy moss we're still on aggressive carry guys we're still on aggressive carry i couldn't believe it and now he's just 10 yards away from field goal range which now wins him the game. Now, he's got Jim Thorpe in at running back now. He took Derrick Henry out. Jim Thorpe is the better passer. So I knew that he was maybe looking to pass the ball soon. And on third and five, he does just that. But now we have Derwin James manned up on Darren Waller instead of Sam Mills. And Derwin James comes up with the pick. And now we are back at it. We only need a field goal to win again. We're going to go back to the 0-1 trap. We're just going to 0-1 trap and throw the bubble screens until he starts to guard him, man. And they're working. They're working. You know, we're already across the 50. And we're just about, what, 10 yards away from field goal range? Maybe maybe 15 yards to feel comfortable. But on third and three, we're going to go back to the bubble screen to DK Metcalf. Pretty bad stick right here by me. Uh, but we're in easy field goal range now. And it was after that play that I actually realized I was on aggressive carry still. So I was still... At very high risk of fumbling before. But now we're on conservative carry. We're just going to 0-1 trap him all the way down. I don't want to take any chances. 
because I think that field goal block animations are becoming more frequent lately. I don't know why that is, but I've been seeing it a lot more lately than I have previously. So I'm just trying to try and 0-1 trap him all the way down. We don't quite get in, but I'm just like, okay, let's just kick the field goal for the win. And he starts doing this. Guys, if you're ever going to lose a game, be a good sport. Show good sportsmanship. Don't be, don't be a loser like this. Uh, he's just hoping for a glitch in the game. There are, have, or there have been glitches in the past where you can actually cheat someone out of a field goal by doing this stuff. Don't do it, man. It just it makes you look look like a loser, in my opinion. But this time he gets caught up on the O line. We kick our field goal. We get our win in an absolute hell game against one of the most frustrating offenses I've ever played against. So just to recap the defense, I basically went cover two man, nickel normal. I spied both safeties, and then I usered that fullback and then would watch the fullback, and that would kind of tell me what direction the play was going uh, and just kind of swing around to that side and click off and then let the computer make the tackles because open field tackling is still pretty tough. If you're not clicking off in the open field, you're probably at very high risk of getting beat either with a stop and go or even just a, just a little swerve or something from your opponent. But guys, that was the game. By the way, why has he got Randall Cunningham if he's never going to pass? Why spend all that money on Randall Cunningham? I don't know. Does, doesn't make sense to me. See, seems like a big waste. But anyway, guys, hopefully that all made sense. I know I was talking a lot about a lot of other things besides the Wildcat adjustments. So one more time to recap. Cover two man at nickel normal. Uh, press, shade over top, spy both safeties, and then user the, the fullback and look at the direction that the fullback's going after the snap. That'll tell you the direction of the run. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. You guys saw he was still getting some yards, but it was much more effective than whatever I was doing early on in the game. Uh, if you guys have other Wildcat defense, definitely let me know. The trick here, because you know, I used to just play a zone and just, just spy everybody. The trick here is there is a legitimate passing threat, when he, especially when he's got Jim Thorpe in. But you guys saw he completed a big pass to Darren Waller with Derrick Henry as well. So you have to be accounting for the pass. You can't just blitz all your linebackers. You can't just run commit because if you do, you're at very high risk of giving up just a one-play touchdown. But let me know what you guys think. I thought this was an exciting game. A lot of offense. You guys saw that the, the gun trips, tight end offset offense can really move the ball up and down the field. Uh, and it's, like I said, it's going to be a free ebook on the YouTube channel coming up, I hope, in the next week. I've been talking about it for a couple weeks now, so hopefully we'll, we're going to be get that, getting that out really soon. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like and subscribe button because it helps me a ton. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. As always, in the comments, let me know what videos you guys want to see in the future. I love hearing all your guys' ideas, and I have a big list of videos I want to do. The trick is just figuring out what to make next. But with that, guys, again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great one, and I'll catch you in the next video.